Hi, Andrea. Hey, Margie. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Thanks. Spring is here. I'm loving it. Me too. Welcome back. Thanks. Thank you. So what do you have for us with this full moon? Okay. It's our second full moon in Libra. We did have one a month ago and it was at zero degrees of Libra. So the theme of Libra and relationship and how we relate to others and how we balance things out in our lives, it's all in play again. This time it's amped up at the critical degree of 29 degrees of Libra, which means it's, it's very much about this uh, balance, the balance of Libra and how are so, we gonna balance things out? So, so the are we of, going like deeper into that? Is that what yes, that is? It's, oh. it's, it's a really a full culmination of the whole meaning, the whole sign of Libra. It occurs next Friday uh, I've got to check this. Let's see, 5.12 a.m. Mountain Time on April 19th. So that would be 4.12 Pacific Time, your time. Okay. Okay. At 29 degrees of Libra, sun at 29 degrees of Aries. A full moon is about showing us something, revealing something to us so we can pay attention and make corrections and adjustments in our lives. And in this case, Libra is the scales of balance. So the general theme, where are we out of balance, both in our relationships, how we're relating to others, and also with self, right? This can have to do with some patterns and programmings that occur within ourself. Yeah. So let's go over some of the higher frequencies of Libra when things are running great with Libra. It shows up as conscious partnership, equality, being able to discover yourself through a partnership, right? Because they're reflecting back. Healthy relationships where you can be yourself within the structure of the relationship. It's also harmony, diplomacy, and peaceful relationships. So this is Libra on a higher scale. Okay, a higher level, a higher frequency, when things are going well. When they're not going so well, which can, this is what this 29 degrees is gonna show us, we have things that have to do with, um, where we're not being realistic, where we're not being realistic. Maybe we're idealizing a partnership. And this is very prevalent for this full moon because there's an in conjunct with Venus and Pisces and Pisces is dreamy and idealistic. And so there's going to be an attraction, Venus, goddess of attraction in this Piscean kind of energy and idealizing it. And so that would constitute an imbalance in a Libra relationship. Um, it might be because we've abandoned our own set sense of our own identity in order to be in partnership where we've absorbed the identity of another. And where we, again, this not being able to maintain our own boundaries where we maybe let another step over or there's no differentiation between self and, and other in the partnership. That might be out of balance. And like I said before, we're, we have old patterns and programmings of dependency or codependency on another. And so this is that theme of Libra. It's coming up to be cleared, right? And bring us back a little bit to our, or back to our authentic true self, right? Without, yeah. With having those boundaries, but still being in flow and peace in the relationship, whether that's a, whatever type of relationship that with that is, even ourselves, right? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And the reason is because Libra, it's really impossible to talk about Libra without the other end of the axis, the spoke of the wheel which is Aries. And Aries is being independent, being your own courageous individual, fighting for yourself in, for a worthy cause. And a worthy cause would, I mean, you, you'd have to figure that worthy cause out, but I would think speaking your truth would be a worthy cause to, do, yeah. <laughs> you know, to, to fight and defend. And so this spoke of balance in the wheel because you can't ride a bike if the wheel is warped. It doesn't, it doesn't have integrity. So 
there's this balance of being able to be your autonomous, authentic self, speaking your truth, and yet speaking it in a way that's harmonious and diplomatic and recognizing that that partnership is a reflect, should be an endorsement, a reflection and an endorsement of who you are on an individual basis. Wow. So that's, we've got two cardinal signs. Libra is a, a cardinal or a pushy relationship sign. It finds the relationship to be of utmost importance. And Aries feels that the individual is of utmost importance. So how do we balance these two? Um, so the sun is at 29 degrees of Aries. And the, uh, like I said, the, the higher frequency, it would be individual, ind um, independent, fighting for a just cause. What does a lower frequency of Aries look like? Self-absorbed or selfish, combative or ruthless. So we're really working with rule you know balancing the balancing yeah and clearing out all that old stuff <laughs> yeah. now mars the ruler of aries is in gemini the sign of communication so this is sort of pointing and indicating that this is going to be a verbal a, a verbal awakening a realization where are words being used too harshly and maybe where you know you're not speaking at all or you're or you're not speaking your truth. So that, that definitely could affect some of that fifth chakra stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, Mercury is also in Aries. So it has a little extra push to speak. So if you are being, if you are someone that's being affected more by Venus and Pisces and not setting boundaries and being a little bit idealistic and dreamy, she is conjunct Mercury in Aries, so put your attention, focus your attention on that Aries assertion of individual and speak up more, you know? Yeah, speaking um, our truth. And I, I want to say something that sometimes when we sure. first start doing that, it can come out maybe not as smooth as we like. So we always right. give ourselves permission to say, oh, wait, give me a second. Let me reframe that, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You, why we don't have to be perfect right from the very beginning? We're not. You can practice. <laughs> you can practice. Yeah. I think intention has a lot to do with it. When we yeah. speak, you know, you're either setting the vibe to communicate well or not. Yeah. And um, we can't control the other. We can only control our own intention for that. Yes. Yes. Now. The, Another little factor, we've got a lot going on with this axis of balance between other and self. The sun is also conjunct Uranus and Uranus is about sudden disruption, sudden changes. It's not, it's, it's an outer realm and it's meant to bring us to a higher frequency, a new way. It's going to, it can, it's a change, a sudden change of energy. So it can feel frightening or disturbing because it's meant to push out that which is old and stagnant stagnant to bring you to an, a higher level. Yeah. And so what I see is that even if it feels like something stable is breaking or, you know, the a foundation of what we think is stable, let's say you have a relationship, you know, you're not speaking up in it or somebody speaking too harshly to you. Um, it's still a foundation. And this sudden Uranus energy or opportunity to break free can, could possibly bring up a little bit of fear around establishing something new. But it's important to remember that the reason why this is showing up is because we are meant to clear this old stagnant stuff and allow ourselves to raise our frequency and our vibration to that which is more authentically genuine and harmonious and brings us to a higher frequency. Love it. Yeah. So the words for that I came up were sudden spiritual evolution when Uranus kicks in here. Okay. Like so we've talked about this one axis and now we've got a cross going on, a cardinal cross. We have to talk about how we can stable also how we can stable all the 
stabilize this. We've got the axis of Capricorn in Cancer. Now over in Capricorn, which deals with structure, you know, the structure of our relationship, structure of the government, the, you know, the structure of any education, whatever yeah. you want to look at. We've got Pluto and Saturn in there. They're sort of, and, and, a, and words that we can use for Pluto and Saturn are power and authority. Now those are kind of lower level words, lower frequency words, but they might be pushing our balance askew. We might be able to see here, oh, my partner is using too much power and authority over me, or there's an issue where of that, where, yes. so the, the, the questions I came up with is, have I created a structure in my relationships in which either I use power and authority over another, or they're using it over me. Got okay. it. I like now, I like to I like to say if someone is it are they forcing their position on me in an authoritative way? Yes. And and, and I'm giving away my power, my exactly. true power. Yeah. Just well, that's right, right because yeah. the higher frequency is empowerment and leadership. Yeah. So when we turn it around, we say, can I find an opportunity? to exert my own independent voice to bring balance to the relationship. And if not, maybe I have to leave the relationship to establish a better one. And as you're saying that, I'm thinking about the internal work that we do because I go back to our relationship with ourselves because that affects the whole, right? And it's yes. like, is it time for me to let go of these patterns that no longer serve me that I'm forcing myself to keep down, right? Or right or hiding behind, right? A great opportunity to like really check in with ourselves as well. Well, a good question, you know, this theme came up uh, a couple of days ago is the theme of, are you your own best friend? Do you speak better to your BFF than you do to yourself? Does the voice in your own head, do you judge yourself and criticize yourself and use too much power, authority, judgment on your, yes. your own self. Do you cut yourself some slack, yeah. you know? And so that imbalance within ourself, these, these patterns and programs of negative self-talk mm -hmm. or where we don't nurture and care for ourselves. And we're going to talk about the other half of that Capricorn thing. But again, it's, this isn't, yes, relationships with others, situations reflect back to us the work we need to do. But if we're really paying attention, we can hear the words that are going off on our own head about yes. all of it. Yeah, we can. And that ends up being projected at others, actually, right? We know this through all of the stuff we've done. Right. Okay, tell me more. <laughs> okay. So on the opposite end of this power and authority or empowerment and leadership is the, a balance point, it's where the, the north node of the moon is, so we want to look there, and that's the, the energy of cancer, nurturance, and caring. Um, and so it's loving and responsible, nurturing, bonding, and being supportive. That's the higher frequencies of cancer. Now, the lower frequencies of cancer could show up as being controlling, addicted to giving and maybe only giving to the family because family becomes more important than anything else. But then being drained by your giving, right? So you don't even have balanced giving because you're exhausted after it. Mm -hmm. And feeling maybe like a victim within all this giving. I do so much and nobody loves me in the family. Mm -hmm. Everybody takes me for granted, okay? So to recap this full moon, it's where are we out of balance? And we're looking at these four cardinal signs of relation, how we relate to others. Are we exerting our own truth, our own independent truth, self, honoring ourself? Is there a problem with having created a structure that is out of balance in terms of not being empowered? 
not being your own leader for your own advocate for yourself and then are you nurturing are you nurturing others taking care of them in the way you speak and communicate are you nurturing yourself in the way you speak and communicate and it's really um this 29 degrees to me when i really looked at it and went over it this morning it feels very intense it feels like a critical degree all right that's what feels yeah. like it's critical this is a, a cardinal signs the word cardinal comes from the word cardo which means door and pushing open the door so this is a doorway doorway yeah. that we can push open for balance right now in our own lives there's a great opportunity this this month yeah let's get aware of this let's retweak our new moon theme in aries about rugged individualism courageous individuality you know um how can that occur what is your just cause find your just cause let's we're going back to that new moon in aries just cause to charge ahead with what you know to be authentically true and right to you creating balance at the yeah. same time because whatever's out of balance is only going to warp that wheel and not going to be strong in the long run anyway yeah that's right yes yeah very good and I, it feels as though the timing for this is actually as always perfect right right because of we, we're needing balance in every area of our, of our lives. Like we can look around us in the global community of what's happening. And it's, it's a really imperative that I like share that when we find that balance in ourselves, it ripples out and, right. and helps the whole. It does. We can't fix ourselves without impacting everything, everyone else on some level. We're all connected energetically. Yeah. And when we get right, it's just one more higher frequency ripple that we're putting out. And so I feel that all the time. When I when I feel like I make a minor or a major change in my life, I'm like, yes. And I know that I was impacted by others, motivated by others. The frequency, the ripples came to me. And now yes. I get to continue that helpful frequency a friend yes. of mine yesterday um said it's sort of like a wave when you go to the baseball game and everyone goes like this and, <laughs> and you watch the wave go <laughs> the arena. i love that and me too i was like that's the best analogy it really yeah. it made me smile we were like laughing so hard we were crying it was great <laughs> i love that so let's talk about you, Miss Margie. Okay, let's do it. Okay, <laughs> let's do it. Uh, so for you, we have um, three major themes going on that are showing up for you, for you to look at, for you to balance, you know, tweak your own independence, assert your own independence by looking at these balance points. Okay. One is you're a person that seeks deeper meaning and truth in life and merc and uh, jupiter has just gone retrograde jupiter is sort of the representative planet for that searching and seeking and when it's retrograde it means turning inward and we have jupiter square jupiter in your chart and that means you're really working in you're honing in on seeking wisdom and meaning and purpose in your life both outwardly and inwardly so that we have, we're working on really strengthening that so kind of focus on where are we maybe what doesn't feel right about that okay? okay and how do you balance that okay we have neptune in pisces that idealistic where you you really finely tune your threads to the divine and you're bringing that into your again your own venus in sagittarius the seeking of truth truth and meaning and so it's seeking a stronger, better connection to the divine and how that truth plays into your life. What is your relationship to the divine? What is your relationship to everywhere you go and everything that you do? And how do you find something deeper with that? And lastly, but not leastly, because 
Saturn's a key player. Saturn square, Saturn exactly in your chart. Mastery, leadership, authority. You know, the, you're working on these themes. You're becoming a master in your yeah. field, in what your, the truth and meaning and purpose of your life and how to create a structure and foundation for you that is so balanced, right? A, a foundation is usually for a perfect, you know, four corners, yes. very strong, solid foundation. It will hold over a long time. And so if there's any imbalances, you got to seek them out, get rid of them, create the Chuck them out the door. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is that integrity. spot on, Andrea, just so you know, for what's coming in. Again, as usual, really spot on for the feelings and insights I've been getting, not only in visions, but my actions that are in alignment with this. It's really spot on. Yeah, because this is about integrity, being whole, yeah. integrous, right? Whether it's a circle yeah. or a square, it doesn't matter. This is your foundation. And you, what, are you, what are you gonna use for your foundation? A friend of mine said yesterday, you know, make sure that your foundation is strong and true to you. And then trust that everything will flow. Once you've got that foundation, you, none of us know the future. We, you're right. Yes, we don't. We don't. Yeah. But with our foundation and being balanced within ourselves, it's all perfect. It is. It's all perfect. It is all perfect. So I wish you balance, Marjorie. Thank you. I wish you love and grace <laughs> and balance. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Love you. Love you too. Bye, Andrea. Have Talk a wonderful to you at the new moon. Yes, sir. Yes. Bye bye. Bye.